Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Bequest. Now, incidentally, one of the uh, mechanisms that I often talk about that's not often used in board gaming is I split, you choose. The age-old thing where there's a piece of cake, one piece of cake left, and me and my brother can't choose. I'll cut it, he picks which piece he wants, everyone leaves happy or unhappy. Well, several games of this have come out, and just recently, uh, very, very, the great split came out, which was very popular, and I think it's overshadowed this one here, Bequest from Z-Man Games. So this is a bunch of super villains, um, like splitting loot and stuff, except you want to try to mess each other over. But this game is all about the I split, you choose mechanism. Let me show you. In this game, player is going to be playing through five different rounds in each round, there's going to be a deck of cards, which is going to be modified based on a number of players. There's numbers in the corner, so you'll play with fewer cards if you play with fewer players. One of these boards is going to be placed between each pair of players as you play. So this is kind of set up for four players, but you can play with up to six. Each player is going to get two chips, A and B. And you can also play with an optional, hey, everyone has a special ability, which I really recommend playing with if you can. So each round is going to be kind of the same way. You're going to turn over a certain number of special cards here based on a number of players. So I mentioned that we're playing a uh, four-player game. So you would turn over three. And these are all the same. So let's show a couple different cards that are out here. These are cool special cards that players can get. Then you're going to take the deck of whatever turn it is, and each player is going to draw five cards, which will become that entire deck. Players are going to look at the five cards that they get. They're going to split them into two groups. It doesn't really matter as how, how you split them, but there has to be at least one card in each group. You're going to put these groups down on the board next to you. Your neighbor is going to then look at these groups and decide which one they want, A or B. They'll put that chip face down here to show, and you're going to be picking from the group that your neighbor offers you. Once everyone has done that, we reveal them. You will take the group that you picked, and then the group that wasn't picked by the cards you put down, you'll take that too. So you'll have anywhere from two to eight cards that you've gotten. Then the players who picked the one, two, and three special cards are going to, in that order, pick one of these special cards in the middle to put in front of them. Then you kind of reset everything. You do the end of a round. Um, we keep going. We're going to be uh, reversing the order that you pass things in. And after five rounds, we're going to look at all the cards and score them. In this game, money is points. And so let's take a look at the different kinds of cards. There are Eastern Hemisphere and Western Hemisphere cards. And if you have more Western global influence than both of your neighbors, you'll get 15. And if you have more than one of your neighbors, you get 10. And 20 and 5 for Eastern. There are three different types of gadgets in the game, and as you collect these, the more of each one you get. So if I have two power cores, I get one, but if I have four power cores, I'll get 15. Treasure cards, you turn face down as you collect them, and you get points for each face down card you have, one, two, three. Evidence cards are not particularly good, which is why you may want to pawn them off in a group you don't want. And they're going to be, they're fine, but if you get three or more, each one's minus three. Hideouts are just worth points, not always positive. These are lackeys, they're one-time use. When you get it, you use it immediately. So like for example, this one says, sell up to two of your hideout cards. Well, there you go. Um, you're gonna get those monies and sold cards. You'll, you flip them over, it's sold, but that can help you out later with the other points that you get. And then there's schemes. And schemes will just give you points based on whatever it says here. For example, this one gives you money equal to your highest earning scheme card, which feels like a bit of a meta type one to show you guys here. So let me show you another scheme card because there's a, like I said, there's a lot of different style cards in the deck. So this scheme card gives you six for each of your sets of cannon, power cords, and vehicles. Anyway, whoever has the most money is the winner of the game. And as I mentioned, you can play with this thing where each person gets different things. Like this person, if they have five or more evidence cards, ignore all negative points. That's pretty cool. And this counts as any one gadget at the end of the game. This person starts with their own scheme. This person doubles all their hideout cards and blah, blah, blah. 
Now, there's going to be a lot of people talking about the Great Split because these games play very similarly. In the Great Split, you take cards, you put them in a little book, pass them to the next person, they pick half. Uh, one of the two splits you made, hand them back to you, you get the other ones. That's the exact same this one is. This one, I think, is a little cleaner in the poker chips. is easier than passing the books. But people are going to like one or the other. I think if you like one, you'll like both. And I don't normally mention another game, but this is definitely the case of a Deep Impact Armageddon type thing because both games are very similar. Now, they end in that the Great Split is about moving up tracks. Bequest is just about set collection. And so that's that. Great Split, this, I like them about the same. So let me talk about Bequest now. So Bequest is fun. I always like the, the, the eye split you choose. One of my favorite thing about Bequest is those special cards in the middle. They're pretty cool. And what they do is they change the values of those one, two, and three. You sit there and go, man, I would really like that one of those cards out in the middle. Ah, I think, I mean, that's, that's a great thing. Those cards are neat out. And some of the cards, like the schemes and stuff, that's pretty much they're only in that deck. And sometimes in this game, you want to take something that's just so someone else can't have it. So there's also negative cards in this. So you have to sit there and think, okay, I'm going to put a really good card in this half, but there's also a negative card there, an evidence card. And you, people don't want evidence cards. And I'm going to put three pretty decent cards in this side and those two on this side. Which one do you want? And you're trying to make it so they pick the one that you don't want. And that just works well. It's five rounds of this. This is not a particularly long game. Scoring is pretty straightforward. There's a little bit of wonkiness as to the cards that you turn down that get you points. There's other cards that might turn a card down. So there's a little bit of that, that selling mechanism. That's a little funky, I think. And also the special abilities. I'm surprised they're not just in the base game. I guess you can play without them and everyone's kind of symmetrical on their start. But the asymmetrical nature of them, I think, really adds to the game. I'll never play Bequest without them. I'm giving Bequest a 7.5. I think it's a really solid game. I tend to like the I split you choose mechanisms. The super villain theme doesn't really mean anything to me. It's funny. The artwork here, it's a little busy, by the way, everything. It, I felt like this game could have looked a little cleaner, but it plays smoothly. And, you know, one thing I think that's pretty good about this is it goes to six players and it works with six players because you're all playing simultaneously. Now you're kind of playing simultaneously with the two people next to you, similar to games like Seven Wonders, um, because you're, the Eastern and Western Hemisphere stuff affects them, you're the one going back and forth with them, so Judy over there, you're really not concerned with what she's doing until the end of the game, you're like, oh, you got a lot. But that's okay, and it does make the game move along pretty neat. So I worry that this name, Bequest, is gonna mean a lot of people are gonna walk right by this on the shelves. I haven't heard much about this, but I think it's a neat little game of, you know, drafting back and forth. And if you like that mechanism as much as I do, I think you'll enjoy it. I'm Tom Vassell. You've been watching the Dice Tower. We'll see you next time.